the valley circle blocks till I'm busy. Oh. What's up, YouTube? Time to talk about base knobs and why I think you really don't need them as much as you would let the industry think you have to have them. So I kind of made a post last night, and a random man was talking, chatting with me a little bit, and I'm always here to learn, just as everybody else is, but I will tell you that I have not used a base knob since I was in high school. And uh, all of my big stereos in the past, I've always just tuned everything with the head unit back. And I used to do a lot of that by ear, which still wasn't too bad. But uh, now I've got the DD-1, which I kind of got suckered in and bought one. They're a great oscilloscope, digital. It's pretty much shove a 9-volt battery in it, and you're good to go. So I always start the head unit, and you can go back through the RCAs to the 4-channel amp or the base amp. doesn't really matter. One might be a little different than the other with distortion. So I don't have any subs in here yet. Uh, got the dog blocker in the back but anyways uh, so with I usually start with the 4 channel Let's start with that so 1000 hertz test tone it's a good relevant uh, idea to try to stay away from as much distortion as possible because it's like a, kind of like a happy medium for your mids and highs so we start with like YouTube full quality as much as you can and put a thousand hertz test tone. You don't have to have any speakers hooked up at all. You can start with, and in fact, the DD1 doesn't need a thousand hertz or 40 hertz. It'll give you distortion at 20 hertz, 30 hertz, 500 hertz. The red light still comes on. So uh, the other light comes on if it detects a thousand or whatever, or 40 hertz, I think, for that one, for the blue, the blue SM the DD1 that I have. Uh, Start with this. This distorts usually around 59 to 60. So when I come back here and I go to the RCAs, I can either plug into the RCAs or I can turn the gain all the way down on the amp. Now we're just going to, I know there's two here, but we're going to use one as an example. So I have my speaker outputs here. I go put the probes in the negative and the positive. And I have the gains all the way down. Just the gain. I'm not worried about setting low pass or uh, not low, yeah. I'm not worried about setting low pass or bass boost or subsonic. So I start cranking the volume up on the radio while the meter is in one of the amps, whether it's a bass amp or a four channel. And as soon as I get that red light, I back the, I back the radio off one notch. And ha sometimes this thing doesn't distort even at 62. I guess it all depends on how good a quality video I have. So with that, in, with that set in mind, once I figure out where the radio distorts, where it's getting distortion back here, I back the radio off one notch, and then I increase the gain. Whether it's on a bass amp, uh, mids and high, whatever you want. Because I got, I have the two amps underneath here. I can hardly see them. But anyways, uh, so then I go from there. I have everything set to flat on the radio, and including the subwoofer level output is set to usually zero. And if my subs get too smelly, I can always just click a couple notches back as day-to-day -day use on the sub-level on the head unit. And it's usually set in stone that way, so I shouldn't have any distortion going back to damage anything. But usually what I do is I set my radios to a couple notches below for bass to uh, allow me to have extra wiggle room with classic rock metal and it's a lot of dubstep you can turn it up to 62 and it doesn't distort but a lot of your decaf and everything else volume 55 to 58 on this pioneer head unit i see it starts seeing quite a bit of distortion so i'll go i go much higher than that it starts getting buddy anyway so there's no need to crank it up any farther than that but when you set this with with an oscilloscope or however you set it you set it with your ear once this is set there's no bass knob in here this volume increases exactly at the same time as your four channel amps my two channel amp and as i have in there as well so everything goes up at the same time and having all these extra speakers in here that have been running for a while including the recoils uh it's not like my mids and highs aren't quiet you know it's not like they're quiet they're they put out some power you know they put out some sound so as these go up, 
the bass goes up. And the bass is not booming or overbearing at volume 30. But when you start cranking it past 50, it really starts accelerating. And by the time you're at like 60, 62 with a dubstep song, it's flexing the wipers on this thing. So, and that's just what the 218s I had in here last. So yeah, there's, there's no reason to uh, honestly have a bass knob. I mean, you start cranking up your volume. Oh, I want to listen to a song. I have the bass knob down low. Okay, I have a little bit of bass. Well, it kind of sounds funny. I mean, it probably would work okay if you had, like, stock door speakers, but my bits and highs are so much louder than, you know, the average Joe's. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not some crazy competition guy. I don't have, you know, 20, 20 mid bases and eight tweeters in each door. But you start cranking up the volume on this, why do you want to have to have a second knob down here just to fuck with all the time? I mean, in, in my opinion, too, having an extra bass knob is just another way to gain distortion you have another input going to their amp going through a cable sending a signal all the way to the bass knob through a rheostat in a sense going all the way back to your amp in my opinion that's just that's going to lead to extra distortion there's no need to even have that if you want to have a bass knob i have it I, a lot of my customers that i've installed stereos for they have they have asked me like what do i need a bass knob i was like well, we'll tune in if you want one you want it and usually I set it to where it's extremely level with all the speakers to where everything goes up exactly at the same rate. So even if you have a really loud system like I've had in here in the past with 218s, 318s, whatever, the mids and highs always keep up. Actually, most of the time, the mids and highs almost surpass my bass. So, yeah, it's kind of my thoughts on that. You know, I'm I'm sure they didn't have bass knobs back in the 90s, and I've talked to so many people when I used to have Facebook and other forums. Like, you got to have a bass knob. How do you run an amp without a bass knob? I, I guess it just doesn't work. I guess if you unplug it, what, do you, what when you unplug a bass knob, it goes into full gain. You know the the imagine plugging in a bass knob and having it all the way down. When you unplug it while you're playing music, it should go bass is pretty much full volume. But the here's the difference: the bass knob is just allowing when you crank it down, it's taking away voltage to your amplifier, so it doesn't have as much input to tell, to tell the subs to work harder. So this, that's the same thing. As you crank up your volume, all the voltages in the RCAs for left and right front, left and right rear, and your sub outputs all go up at the same time, all in unison together. So yeah, you, you tune it, you know. Like I said, you give yourself a little bit of headroom for like dubstep, metal, and classic. That way, if the song's a little quiet or whatever, or if you want it to be a little bit louder and have a little bit extra bump, you can crank it up a little bit. And yeah, there's a lot of extra tuning I, I, I have to do. Uh, I usually cut all my, my mids out at like 80 or 100 hertz. And then uh, the subs take care of the rest all at the same time. You know, I I know, uh, Rando, you were talking about uh, if I want to have a conversation or whatever. I mean, I I get what you're saying, and I'm not saying you can't use a bass knob. I to me, I just think they're kind of silly. Uh, there's there's really no there's really no use for them for me. You know, if I want to have a conversation, I just turn it down, and you have everything tuned properly. It's not overbearing on the mids and highs, and it's not overbearing on the bass because everything is at the same exact level. So. Me and the old ladies, you know, we just went on a road trip earlier today. And uh, we were listening to this at volume 10. I could still hear the music, and she was talking on the phone with her grandma. And I could still hear everything just fine. It's not overbearing. Granted, there's no bass in here. But even if I did have the subs in here, I would not be overbearing a phone conversation or anything. But if I want to start cranking this thing all the way up, it's going to flex the shit out of this Yukon. So, anyways, later, guys. Uh comment below if you want to have some discussions if teach me something new you know but from my experience i've been doing stereo since probably about 2006 and uh yeah it's been a while so later guys all right one last thing i forgot uh after you have your dd1 or your oscilloscope or whatever uh after you have it hooked up and you have backed off your radio one notch to have the meter's red light go away so you have no distortion coming from there. Then you can take your gain and start creeping your gain up until the meter turns red again. 
boom, your amplifier set for up to distortion level at full volume from your radio and the max gain you can go. So, anyways, later guys. Maybe I'll have to do a video, a tutorial of how to tune stuff. Uh, I don't know, it's always seemed like a popular subject too. So, uh, later guys.